What's up, everyone? Long time no see. It's been a couple weeks. I'm uh, just sitting here in my car and uh, waiting at a red light, waiting to get to work. Just filled up gas at a uh, BP right over there. And um, yeah, so guess what I got? A new to me car. Meaning it's used, of course, but it's still really nice. It's a 2004 Volkswagen GTI. And uh, the steering wheel, the gauges and whatnot. And that's right, 81,000 miles. It's pretty high for a 2004, but I had it checked. Oh, it's, that's another story. The radio is missing. But it's got heated seats, which is nice. Heat and air, which my other car did not have. But, um, what was I going to say? Oh, yeah. I had it mechanically checked out, and everything's good. I went to a local, because I bought this off a uh, private party. So I went to a uh, local Volkswagen dealership, had them check it out, and they said the main thing is at 80,000 miles, or 60 to 80,000 miles, you need your uh, timing belt replaced. And that's pretty expensive. And they checked it and they said, yep, yeah, it's already replaced. So that's one less thing I have to worry about. And uh, let me see, it's just really nice. It's, it's still a two-door, um, you know, car like my Camaro. But this one has a little bit more back uh, back seat room, and uh, it's really nice. I like the hatchback style of this car, and uh, it handles wonderfully. It was the first owner. I'm the third owner. The first owner had it lowered a little bit, so the handling on this thing is amazing. But when you take curbs or like if you go up a driveway, you have to do it at an angle, or else you're going to scratch your undercarriage. But he put a uh, metal uh, guard underneath so you couldn't mess up anything mechanically, which is nice. So it's professionally done. But what I was talking about, the head unit, the uh, radio, this is the first, uh, the guy who had it before me, I guess, really pimped it out and put in aftermarket head unit, speakers, subs, all that good stuff, and rewired the whole car and had a, a separate amp for all the speakers. So basically, when I went over to my friends to see if we could get this head unit fixed, because um, I wanted to put an aftermarket one so I could connect my iPhone, and we looked at it, we took it out, and then we put in the, the, the next one, and we couldn't get any power to it. So then we looked at the speakers to see what was wrong, and all the speakers, so were all the wires were cut. So basically what happened is this guy took out his expensive aftermarket stuff, threw the stock head unit and the stock speakers back in and then just because he had to run a, a separate amp for all the speakers so I think he just cut the wires and then just stuffed everything back in instead because the factory wiring is not there so I'm gonna have to save up my money and it's beyond my friends um, like he couldn't figure out why it's not getting power so it's beyond his expertise so I'm gonna have to save some money and get it professionally uh, uh, rewired and it's gonna suck. I have to ride with no no music which sucks a little bit but at least I have you guys to talk to. And this thing is a uh, was listed when I found it it was listed as a Volkswagen Golf and if you guys know anything about Volkswagen they're, hold on one second their Golfs and their GTIs have like the same body style and you can choose from a two-door or a four-door on both models. Well, this is a two-door. And the badging from the previous owner, oh, it's got a sunroof too, which is nice. Even though it's rainy out, I still like it. Um, the previous owner, I guess, took off all the, the name badging, like the, uh, the, the Golf or the GTI or the Golf or whatever it would be on the back or on the front grill. He took those off, so I'm like, all right. So I go to look at it. And I open the hood and I see a 1.8 turbo in there, 1.8 liter turbo. And I'm like, that's only available on the GTI, not the Golf. So I got a pretty good deal on it because GTIs are a little bit more expensive than Golfs because they're like more premium package, more like a hell of a lot more performance. I think uh, Golf, a 2004 Golf got like, I want to say like around 28 to 30 miles per gallon. Um, and the, it was a two liter gasoline 
And then they also came in a 1.9 liter uh, diesel, which got like 40 miles to the gallon. Excellent engine. If I could have got that, I would have. But it only had 105 or 110 horsepower. This thing gets about 27 or 26 miles to the gallon or 28, around there. It's not in the 30s, but it's in the mid to upper 20s, which is really good. And compared to my old car, especially. And, excuse me again, sorry. And this thing puts out 180 horsepower because it's turbocharged and it's a 1.8 liter. Now my V6 and my Camaro put out 190 horsepower stock. This thing is 10 less horsepower but half the engine size. It was a 3.6 V6, 3.6 liter. This is a 1.8 liter. Turbo of course, but, oh sorry if I zoomed in. God, I'm holding this with my wrong hand. Let me zoom back out. Which, that's not out. There we go. So let me find a parking space so I can talk to you. Basically, the, v the Camaro was a V6, 3.6 liter. This is a four-cylinder, 1.8 liter turbo, of course. That's how it gets its power. But it's half the engine size. It gets like 10 more miles to the gallon. Around 10. And, um, yeah, it's just as fast. And it's even more uh, pickup because it's front-wheel drive and it's lowered. So the handling is, like, amazing. And also in the wet weather like today where it's all rainy. It's uh, a lot better handling, like the old car would spin out sometimes because rear, uh, rear wheel drive. But um, yeah dude, it's leather and everything, and it's in really good condition. But I think the reason why I got a, a, also another good deal on it, besides she thinking it was a Golf, was because she probably knew that the audio was messed up on it. But um, whatever, I could save up my money for that. But um, yeah, it's been a, quite a long vlog and I gotta get to work, so I'll see you guys later.